in my college years, I came across a lot of interesting people. One day, I had the pleasure of speaking with a Muslim. I naturally tried to bring him to Christ, but the doubt in him was strong. He raised an interesting question, and I have intended to make a video about it for a long time. He claims that the Bible never claims Jesus was divine, and that this was created much later by medieval scholars. For the purposes of this analysis, I tried to remain as dubious as possible when examining scripture. For this reason, I ignored all verses that could simply be attributed to your average prophet. I also excluded verses using the titles Lord and Christ, as these can also refer to an earthly king, one who is anointed and as a sign of respect. Finally, I excluded verses with Jesus saying that he saw into heaven, because that is yet another job of a prophet. Now, the final stipulation is that I will only be using canonical New Testament writings, and not the writings produced centuries later. True, the official dates are contested, but this should serve for our purposes. With that out of the way, let me tell you a story about St. Augustine, one of my favorite saints, a doctor of the church and a bishop. He was contemplating the Trinity because his finite human mind could not reconcile it with James 2.19. While walking along the beach, he saw a child digging a hole in the sand. Then, the child went to the water with a bucket and scooped up some of the water and then poured it into the hole. Augustine watched this boy for a short time before asking him what he was doing. The boy responded that he was going to take the whole ocean and put it into his hole. Augustine took him aside and told him that that was impossible to do, citing the vast size and depth of the ocean. The boy then turned to him and said, In the same way, neither can you fit the mystery of the Trinity into your mortal mind. Now, of course, the Trinity is difficult to understand, even with visuals. In order to understand the Trinity, let us start with the Gospel of Matthew. Here, Jesus makes it abundantly clear that God is three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Why is there a need to say it this way if the Holy Spirit is merely the wisdom slash word of God? This next passage clarifies it a bit more. Here, Jesus tells his disciples to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three co-equal and separate persons. Now, to see what Jesus said of his divinity, let us turn to John. John focuses more on Christ's divinity than any of the other evangelists, and so you would expect him to get straight to the point. There are not one, not two, but three instances of Jesus almost being stoned for claiming to be God. Now, it is important to note that in all three instances, Jesus neither backtracks, nor does he say that it was a misunderstanding. This is even the charge the Jews used to bring him to be executed. Now, let us look at the epistle to the Philippians. Here, it is said that the name of Jesus is above every name. Excuse me, 
but I thought that the name that was above all names would be Yahweh, Jehovah, or Elohim. Could it be that there is something more to this mortal man? Finally, to understand Jesus as co-equal to God, we turn to the book of the Revelation of John of Patmos. Now, it is well documented that the Lamb, in each of these instances, is Jesus himself. But I will touch on that later. In each instance, the denizens of heaven treat both the Lamb and God with the same amount of respect and honor. It is either blasphemy or all due respect to the Lord of heaven and earth. No, in the Judeo-Christian mindset, just taking the name of God does not make you God. The title includes two very important jobs. The first is being the judge of souls, and the second is to have forged the universe from nothing. Now I will address these two. Did Jesus ever claim that he would judge the world? Let us go back to the Gospel of Matthew for another example. In Matthew 25, we see that Jesus is judging the nations based on their actions. Son of Man is a title that Jesus consistently uses to refer to himself in order to emphasize his humanity. So, if Jesus is a judge, all that is left to do is to confirm that he is credited with the creation of the universe. Again, our best source is the Gospel of John. This passage immediately calls Genesis 1-1 as a reference. If the Word became flesh and was with God before creation, then clearly Jesus is not a creature. Colossians is a little more vague and difficult to understand. This passage emphasizes that all things came through and by Jesus, and that he holds all things together. I thought that that was God's job. First Peter also tells the same story. I do not think it could be any clearer. No, in Judaism and Christianity, there is another job that God has that is unique. In addition to judging souls for heaven or hell, God also removes sin with a worthy sacrifice. Throughout ancient Israel, this was often a lamb or another animal. In Christianity, all sin is taken on by Jesus. No, scriptures make it clear that Jesus is the one who took all sin away as the eternal sacrificial lamb. I will show them to you in a moment, but first I must explain that it is vital for Jesus to be divine if he is the sacrifice. We owe our salvation to the one who saved us. This will be expanded on in just a moment. Since we owe our salvation entirely to God, it can neither be a man, angel, or God-man. God alone holds our salvation, and therefore the Savior must be God. Furthermore, the offense of sin is eternal, and thus an eternal payment is required. This is an overly simplified explanation. But unless you are a theologian, I doubt that you care to hear the whole thing. First, let us turn to Romans. Adam's rebellion brought death into the world, and brought it under the curse of sin and death. Only by the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ was this sin erased. Colossians and Philippians are both short, sweet, and to the point. First and Second Timothy are also quite clear. Titus specifically calls Jesus a savior in reference to sin and death. 
Hebrews is also quite clear. Finally, let us turn to 1st and 2nd Peter. Now, in addition to saving us from our sins, we are now slaves to Christ. Now get that image out of your head. Slave at the time of Moses, as well as Jesus, was closer to indentured servant. Therefore, if Jesus did pay our debt, by this definition, we would need to serve him and do his will until this debt was paid off. The best examples of this are found in the epistles. Let us start with Romans, not to mention 2 Corinthians, moving on to Galatians, then to Ephesians, next to Philippians, on to Colossians, to Titus, down to James, into 2 Peter, and finally to Jude. Quite a few fine examples of people being in debt to Christ for paying off their debt. Now, if Jesus truly is God, then he is also king of the universe. Is there any evidence to support this? Once more, we must first turn to John. Only God has power over all flesh. Jesus claims that he is a king before the leaders of the Jews. Even more so, he claims that he is a king to a person who has the authority to execute him for such a claim, just as Herod once intended to do. 1 Corinthians is a little more vague. Here, Jesus hands the kingdom to God, a mere mortal giving power to God. That can't be right. Colossians shows the same thing. Why would God give all power to a mere mortal. Ephesians gives more emphasis to his power. If Jesus has power over everything, then he truly is God. Second Timothy shows us what heaven will look like. What good would it do to reign alongside a mere mortal rather than God himself? Hebrews has a fine example. Again, mortal humans are not given full power over earth. That is God's job. Our final example is in Jude. Be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. That is a very bold statement. The final sticking point is that Jesus would have to be made flesh in order to dwell among man, as per Exodus 33.20. Our first source is from 2 Corinthians. Now Jesus was the son of a carpenter, or day laborer, depending on your translation. In what universe does that make anyone rich? Do not tell me it is rich in spirit or goodwill, because it says that he became poor. It is almost as if Jesus shed his heavenly glory and became man. Next, we go to Philippians. It goes into much greater detail. Other translations explain that Jesus did not think that it could be grasped. Philippians is very explicit in saying that Jesus shed his divine glory and became man. Clearly, there is scriptural evidence to say that Jesus Christ is God. Again, it is a very difficult concept to grasp. But to say there is no biblical evidence is just ignorant. Thank you so much for watching this video. I put a lot of work into it. Since you stayed till the end, you are the first to know that I have a big project I am working on, and it may just blow your mind. Give me that old time religion. Give me 
that old time religion give me that old time religion it's good 